Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. On Monday, which is when this video is going to come out, so tomorrow basically because I'm recording this on Sunday, is a holiday in Australia. And the reason it's a holiday in Australia is because we're celebrating the Queen's birthday. Now it isn't the Queen's birthday on, us, uh, on Monday, but uh, you know, we've ne never let uh, facts like that come and get in the way of a good holiday. So tomorrow is actually a day off for me, which is really nice because I'm having a long weekend, which means I finally get a bit of a breather. And I decided to celebrate that. We're going to make a British-themed week in World of Warships here. So we're starting that off today with something that's been a little bit overdue. The British Tech Tree for Battleships. That's been out for quite a bit. I haven't really had a huge amount of time to play with them quite yet, but uh, let's take a look. So the... Actually, the premium battleships, I don't have quite all of them in my private account, but I've got a couple of them. Uh, the premium battleships are a, big, a bit of a mixed bag. So there you find ships like the Hood or the Warspite, which have um, excellent armor-piercing shells. And where I would usually go with AP instead of, uh, of high-explosive shells, you've got other ships like the Agincourt or the Nelson, which have... Actually, very disappointing armor-piercing shells and very, very good high-explosive shells. The tech tree, so far as I've seen it, um, seems to be more on the high-explosive side. So what makes the British tech tree ships special? What makes them different from the other nations? Their high-explosive shells are really good. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, that, that is really one of the main distinguishing factors. The guns, uh, especially in the early tiers, are a little bit, a little bit um, of smaller calibers. And that kind of theme goes goes up. So, for example, the King George V at Tier 7, which I haven't played yet. But um, she gets 356mm guns, which for Tier 7, most of them are around the 400mm or the 380s for the Germans. But um, uh, it, it comes. It comes up later. And we're going all the way up to Conqueror with uh, 419mm main guns. So, should these ships actually have uh, high explosive shells pre-selected. That is um, a change that has been introduced relatively recently that some ships get uh, get a different armor type pre-selected. The abnormally battleships, almost all battleships would have had the armor piercing pre-selected. Uh, I think the only ex exception I can remember pre-patch was the Oktyabrskaria, the, the Soviet tier five premium. She had AG pre-selected. So what does that mean? Um, well, first of all, uh, that means that everybody who is playing the British battleship line, even if they don't really know what they're doing quite yet, is going to start out with high explosive shells, which is really bad news for destroyers. <laughs> because, of course, if you're firing armor piercing from a battleship, you're, more, you're most likely just going to overpenetrate a destroyer, not going to do very much damage at all. Whereas if you're starting to fire high explosive, that isn't overpenetrating because high explosive can't overpenetrate. So if you're a destroyer captain and you see somebody who's who might be a new player and they're in a British battleship, uh, be careful because they will have most likely the highest high explosive loaded. Not because they know that it's better against destroyers, but just because that's what these things have preloaded to begin with. Anyway, um, on the lower tiers, uh, so far I've played up to the Iron Duke on tier 5. I really enjoyed the Orion. The Orion was a great ship. Um, She's she had again somewhat so somewhat um, smaller calibers with the 343 millimeters, but uh, I really like these guns. They are doing a lot of damage with the high explosive. I've gone I've done high explosive citadels with this thing at at closer ranges, so they have good they have actually very decent penetration and the fire chance is usually very good on these as well. That is one thing. The other thing that you'll notice on the British battleship is that they're actually quite maneuverable, for battleships that is. So, for example, if we look at the Iron Duke here, um, with my setup, she's got an 11 second turn time, which is very reasonable. And she's also reasonably quick to, to get off the ground. Uh, of course, this, uh, this is due to the fact that um, my module setup, I've got the acceleration module and the turn module, so that I haven't built them for, I haven't built her for, for tanking, but more for maneuverability. Tanking is, is a bit of a thing here. So... Yeah, again, actually, let's look at the Iron Duke again. So, uh, the the armor is a bit meh. <laughs> it's, 
if I can say it. It reminds me of the French battleships. They have a similar problem. They are, um, they're, they're, they have slightly lower caliber guns. The armor is a bit meh. But um, I, I personally like the British guns better so far. But uh, that might change in, in higher tiers. I mean, the, the Republica tier 8, the premium, has amazing main guns. But yeah, the, the armor isn't the greatest. So if you are... Um, if you're being shot at by large caliber shells or taking torpedo hits, you're gonna lose health pretty quickly. How about how about the secondaries? Well, so far these things have 150 millimeter secondaries, which is something I like. So we can have a quick look on on the tech tree and see how that how that plays up in higher tiers. So if we look at the King George, the fifth up here, 130 millimeter secondaries, still looks decent. And all, let's, let's just check the Conqueror. And she also gets 130 millimeters. So it looks like these uh, these secondaries are going to, uh, are going to reduce. Um, not necessarily secondary spec ships, because also we don't get the auto secondaries. The AA is kind of average so far from what I've seen. Um, so what does this mean for for these ships? How they play? Um, the high explosive is not a bad choice, especially as long range, uh, especially with the, with the bigger, with the, the higher tiers. They have an insane fire chance. So again, if we look at uh, at HMS Conqueror here, she gets uh, 12 420 millimeter main cannons with an 18% fire chance, and and very respectable damage number. This isn't upgraded, right? This is this is stock. So, <laughs> woo, <laughs> uh, long range, very good fire chance. And uh, they do get the rapid reload skills. So, yeah, um, not the greatest tanks out there, even at, at these at these upper tiers. Not uh, not super well armored, but um, very effective high explosive shells, which makes them extremely dangerous. That and the maneuverability makes them extremely dangerous towards destroyers. So yeah, again, if you're a destroyer captain, be careful if you're rushing an, uh, a British battleship. Because most likely they're gonna have the high explosive preloaded anyway, because that's most in most scenarios the best ammunition so choice that they have to to take. And um, yeah, <laughs> your life is going to be very short <laughs> if you're doing these things. If they have any idea what they're doing. So yes, uh, questionable armor, um, decent maneuverability, uh, great main guns. So and that kind of sums them up for me, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, let's have a game, and uh, since the Iron Duke is the only one that I've gotten up so far, I'm gonna go with it. Maybe one last word on uh, the captain training. Not all the premium uh, British battleships are suitable as captain trainers, because, for example, the Hood, um, if we look at the, the skills, she gets precise aiming and air defense alert, so you'd set her up completely differently from what you would do on a tech tree ship. Um, the hood's armor piercing is great, so I wouldn't probably be. I wouldn't, I'm not going to be using high explosive much on the hood, so I would eventually go with the armor piercing cap shell skill. So not all of the um, of the premium British battleships are good captain trainers for the tech tree line. The Nelson probably is a good one, as the Nelson doesn't have any ship skills, and um, yeah, there there are a couple, but not all of them. So just something to be aware of. Anyway, let's take a look at the Iron Duke. In this first game, we are, what are we? We are top tier on Golden Channel. And there is, there are three destroyers on the enemy team, a Nikolas, a Mutsky, and a V-170, and a carrier. So where we want to be in this ship is, or generally in a battleship really, is at the inside of the islands at your baseline there. Because that way you can kind of hold a position. You've got the island to cover you to the left uh, in case somebody does a flanking run. And, um, well, you're holding the capture circle. So ideally, our two destroyers would be going into the capture circle. But, um, you know, this is tier 5. <laughs> you know what's coming, right? <laughs> you all know what's coming. Uh, cue the derp music. Uh, let's see. So, uh, it looks like Nicholas decides he wants to go left. Um, well, for once, our carrier is actually starting to send planes out. So that, that's a first. He has learned how to send planes out. The other Nicholas is firing his guns, so such that he can get spotted easier. 
Uh, I don't have the range to shoot at anything yet, but the two Nicholases? N Nikolai? I don't know. <laughs> How do you pluralize these things? Uh, well, they're, they're going left flight. So the other two battleships seem to be quite happy where they are. The carrier is staying stationary. So the only one actually heading into the cap currently is the Uberry over there. And um, while he's a very, very good ship, he's not very good at, um, at, at tanking. Yep, I know. I'm, I'm coming. Give me a second. This thing is not, is not the fastest out there. Okay, there comes the V-170, so let's get these, put these guns to the test, and uh, I think, yep, he, he's actually uh, not, not quite as quick as I thought. The guns have an extremely direct firing angle. They are very on point, but not very high, so it's often quite difficult to actually fire over obstacles. Let's just get him a little bit, come, come a little bit closer. I'm already putting my, uh, putting my ship in reverse, just because I'm expecting there to be torpedoes. And this is what I mean with the direct firing angles. And now he regrets. Uh, he regret Uberry can kill this one. He regrets his decision. Uh, there come the torpedoes. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm reversing. Oh look, who's turned up? The enemy carrier is turned up. He's trying to cap. Uh, he hasn't realized that he has planes. Um, but you know, maybe this is the first time for him to play a carrier and he doesn't actually know that he has planes. And he's trying to fire the gun. Well, because he has one of them. <laughs> Well, okay, you do you, buddy. But you see these, um, again, I'm, I'm just firing high explosive here. Uh, these HE cell shells are doing um, are doing a very reliable amount of damage. And, you know, a is not a very sturdy target, so there, that one goes. Where's the rest of the team? Okay, one of the destroyers has decided to join in, in the cup circle. The rest is sailing around somewhere around the map and exploring the outsides of these islands to see if they can find, I don't know, maybe they're looking for oil or something. Okay, Mutsuki, he's been playing before, he knows what he's trying to do, he's sitting behind that island there and he's trying to... is he coming out? Okay, I, I don't want to wait for you, I'm just gonna fire at the Congo. And this is about as far as I want to go, because I am not a very campy but, uh, a tanky battleship and there's a Koenig and a Congo out there. So I'm just um, turning in a little bit, trying to dodge some shells here, because I cannot take too much of a beating in this thing. It's not like a, like, a, like a New York or something. Oh, there he comes. Yep, I knew you were doing that. Okay, let's turn the ship around, get the guns back to fire. But yeah, I can't lob, so I think I'll just get one hit there. Yep, and out. Uh, that's my punishment <laughs> for being stationary. I have to reverse in case, the, because the Mutsuki was coming out there to, to shoot torpedoes. I don't know if he got them away. So I'm going to have to reverse out a little bit. Okay, now the Koenig is behind an island. And it looks like the Mutsuki is going away as well. Uh, and I'm just sitting here in the cap circle, being king of the hill and everything, and trying to keep the islands between myself and the enemy uh, team as much as I can. Okay, Congo is on fire. Is he damage conning? Doesn't look like. Well, enemy let's see if we can get him some more fire. Okay, enemy Congo takes out our Nicholas. Yep, <laughs> that happens. Uh, okay, fire is out. Uh, nope, no additional fires. Maybe he damage con. Maybe his damage con just came off cooldown. Then again, I've got two battleships and I'm giving way too much broadside here, so I'm going to have to move a little bit. Uh, turn in, turn in. Nope, these Congo shots are on point. Ow. Okay, there comes the Mutsuki. Uh, six kilometer broadside. Uh, I would say bye. <laughs> you don't do that in front of a British battleship, especially not if I've got my guns reloaded. Alright, uh, Congo is behind the island, so he can't shoot at me, but König can. And I really, really don't want to be at the receiving end of these German guns. Not with as um, questionable armor as I have. Ow, ow, yeah, that hurts. Uh, it's probably a citadel into the broadside. Couldn't quite get the turn, but um, to ease out a little bit. And then I'm just going to try and turn away. Yep, he overshoots. Hit the enemy. And, um, yeah, just, uh, just try to turn away. I mean, as long as he stays out of the cap circle, we've won this, right? <laughs> There's not much left uh, from the enemy team. Oh, that's probably that was those were probably Congo shells. So yeah, I've got to kind of get the uh, get some hard cover behind myself and these people enemy because their fire is um, unpleasantly accurate. <laughs> but uh, okay, the König is under is under air attack, and uh, there's the Uberi as well over there, and he's got extremely dangerous torpedoes. Yeah, the Bog takes him out, which leaves only the Congo, so I can actually get some shots off at that guy. I can't remember if his if his damage con is already off cooldown. Uh, but I'm setting him on fire again. Yeah, this is what you do with it. No, it was off cooldown. Okay, this is what you do with um, with British battleships. 
Uh, you set fires, you absolutely destroy destroyers who are, who are stupid enough to think like, oh yeah, battleship, hey, you're not gonna hurt me very much. I've done this before, battleship shells don't hurt. Uh, they do, when they're British, they do. <laughs> but yeah, we've got this in the bag. Um, Ruffle stomped the enemy team pretty much here. There's just the combo left. Uh, it's my last salvo, I'm gonna get off at him. But uh, they're, they're res they are respectably precise. Um, cannot complain. And um, uh, the, the HE is doing a very good amount of damage. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's one thing you can do. Uh, let's play another one. In this second battle, we I am uh, bottom tier and I'm actually um, division up. Now. I hope I'm pronouncing you correctly. Zusini? Uh, Zusini? So anyway, I'm, pro I'm uh, division up with Zusini here. Uh, in her König and we are well bottom tier carrier battle and there's a Bayern on the enemy team okay <laughs> dangerous things but only one destroyer there's a Minikaze so well, let's see and we're playing on Silent Shoal so we'll have to spread it around a bit I guess at least there are not too many destroyers out here because these islands are really really good for destroyers okay I'm spawning left uh, she's spawning right so let's see what am I going to do? I'm probably going to just kind of get into a defensive position slightly towards center here. Again, this is mid-tier, right? So you, um, don't be too critical in the comments about the poor people who, are, who haven't found out yet that carriers have planes. <laughs> but um, that uh, that independence over there has, uh, has figured it out. And there come some planes. Our independence is not yet quite there. But there come some independence planes in. And... Um, do they head towards me? They might be heading towards me. I'm just, I was taking it slow. It looks like we're doing a defensive setup here. I mean, we haven't communicated this with the team, but um, you know, just uh, just looking at how we're how we're dispositioned. Okay, something spotted me. I don't think. Yeah, I might have been air spotted from the dive bombers over there. So, but look at how look at, look at the destroyers are going into cover over there. Um, the battleships are hanging back, and that Dallas is in no rush to get out there either. So. Um, we're having a relatively defensive setup. Dallas is, Dallas is dodging some shots. Okay, destroyer spotted. There's Minikaze. Let's keep in mind that he's over there, which means the destroyer is not over here, which means I can actually start taking some pot shots at somebody. And there's a broadsiding Omaha. Let's see what we can do about that one. Of course, this means that I'm also broadsiding, but at this range, nothing's probably going to be super precise. That was four good hits and a fire. And that Minikaze is coming unpleasantly close and it looks like we've only had one ship on this side up oh, he's pulled a lot sir <laughs> yeah you can't sail through islands give him a couple of shots um uh, not sure what that is probably budioni okay that's where a couple of good hits on the minikaze but um so far we've, we've seen one two three four enemy ships on the right plus the carrier makes five which means there's only two ships on the left flank and there's our carrier and the dallas over here so uh, i'm gonna head over a very gently while that budioni keeps shooting at me uh, towards the other side and just so I don't nice no, out of range uh, uh, Just so I don't um, I don't get myself too far out of position for where the enemy ships are coming Actually getting in a couple of shots here coming in from the Bayern, but uh, not doing very much probably bouncing up my turrets by the looks of it Okay, uh, we've lost our Mutski and There's the Bayern. Okay. This is one ship. I don't want to tangle with too much. So I'm just trying to get behind the island here Yep, ow, ow <laughs> These were good hits. Um, this is where the lack of armor of the the British battleship starts playing out. But he's damaged. Can, can I get another fire? And again, here the the um, look at this. The the shells all almost all of them get into the island, but one gets through and sets a perma fire. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta be lucky sometimes. Uh, that's the problem with the uh, British shells. Their, their arcs are extremely flat, which is very good if you're dealing with destroyers or other things, but it's not so good if you have to shoot over islands. Now, can we get another fire here? Maybe? On that Bayern, German battleship, relatively flammable. Rapid reload. Okay, he puts the fire out. I'm setting another one. <laughs> or it might have burned out at the time. Uh, maybe he just lets it burn. We'll never know. Okay. Uh, Budjani is heading... Oh, oh, there's Domotsky. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you. Okay, dodge some torps. Uh, this is where the very, very good, um, the very good maneuverability of these things come, come in, because um, 
while I'm still taking pot shots from the Budioni over there. It's gonna ignore him for now. I'll have to deal with this destroyer because nobody else seems to be doing it. You're broadsiding in front of the British battleship, and um, this means up oh, there's some air torpedoes. Okay, that's what I've saved my damage cone for for that flood. Okay, and you are very very dead. Okay, goodbye. One destroyer down. Now um, it looks like most of the team is on the right side, plus that Budioni who's keep, who keeps trying to do things to me <laughs> from that distance. Uh, okay, uh, you you do you, buddy. Uh, so I'll give you some parting shots, but I need to help out on the right side. I have no idea what the health of our ships is over there. Oh, the little bugger actually manages to set me on fire. Oh, set him on fire in return. Here comes the carrier again. Uh, the carrier has been, been a constant pain in this battle. <laughs> But uh, I'm gonna need to have to help out a little bit over here. Let's see how this is look like. Okay, König is on half health. There's a cruiser of some sort down there, and there's another battleship over there. Um, yeah, that's Usini there. Uh, that Omaha looks almost dead. She can take this one. Okay, the other König takes him out, which means we we're three kills ahead to one. Okay, starts looking good. Uh, Dallas on the left flank has to probably deal that Bayern to deal with, but the Bayern doesn't seem to be pushing. So. Um, yeah, good, good luck setting him on a fire. Uh, there's a New York over there. Is he stopping? Is he stopping? Is he slowing down? I think he is. Yep, yeah, that's uh, shoot center line. He looks like he's slowing down. And um, yep, yeah, just going to help out a little bit here. I'll make sure that these guys are fine, but uh, we should have this. We've got two Kearneys on about a little bit less than half health, so that New York's probably dead. Well, let's just make sure he doesn't get another shot off. And Salvo almost ready. There we go. Okay. And that should be the end of the New York. All right. Who's next? Um, we've still got the Bayern somewhere on the left flank. We've got the Budioni who's been... Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. Uh, we've got the Budioni who is uh, not particularly effective. And I think that the carrier is dropping me again. Okay, slammer in reverse, turn in. Maybe you can dodge one or two. Uh, I can dodge one, okay. That's three hits from the carrier, but that's okay. They don't have... Uh, and there's the Budioni again. So, actually I'm going to try out the armor piercing and like at nine kilometers, because this is a light cruiser, uh, sort of. So, yeah, semi-pens, uh, not super effective. Let's see the second salvo. But he's shooting at me, yeah, two, two full pens, one over. You can use the armor piercing, uh, but um, I'm just distracting him at this point so the fire good can just casually sail by and torpedo him. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> oh, well done, fire good. Okay. Um, oh, it looks like the Bayern is trying to cut, but there's 35 seconds. He has he has, uh, he has sunk the dollars, I presume. And there's like 30 seconds left in the game, so there's no way that he's going to cut us out. Um, oh, there's a carrier. Can I get some revenge? Well, probably not because the darn island is in the way again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I can lob this in a British battleship. I'm gonna give it a try, but uh, nope. Yeah, can I get the rear turrets around? Probably not either. Anyway, uh, someone else can take him. Uh, Firegood looks uh, looks pretty close. Uh, Independence has been playing well. I've had a lot of air trouble coming in, but um, yeah, British battleship uh, can, can when it comes to destroyer defense can fulfill the ro the role of a cruiser. So if you're if you're in anything other than a British battleship and there's destroyers coming in, find yourself a British battleship. And if they know any, if they have any idea of what they're doing, they will actually take on the destroyers like a, like, like a heavy cruiser line. So, yep, that's it. Um, uh, thanks everybody. I'm still going to be doing a much more detailed uh, actual ship review on on uh, ship uh, on this ship and on the rest as I unlock them. So. Uh, detailed reviews will be incoming. This is just to give you an overview and to see like if you're interested to play that tech tree and to to you know invest time and resources into it or if you say like no I, I like I like different kinds of ships. Thanks everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.